Then we have something called two node cluster, which is basically a cluster made of two nodes, as you can see. The two nodes can be either connected to four switches or they can be directly linked together. So first example is direct connect. Second example is using a switch. A uh, two node cluster is a type of cluster that is ideal for running a limited number of workloads in remote offices and branch offices. So if you don't want to invest in a standard cluster, you can simply deploy uh, multiple two-node clusters in your different locations. We recently introduced the cheapest option for dynamic uh, for two-nodes cluster compared to two-nodes cluster. And in this document, you can see one of the newly introduced series called the VD series. This is a really small box with two nodes and a small compute device that acts as a witness. It's a small box that can be deployed in telco environments and the edge environments. Um, uh, it's a small box that can run as a two node cluster. Uh, we recently introduced a type of cluster called satellite nodes, uh, which is a, like uh, a cheapest option compared to uh, it's the cheapest option compared to um, two nodes cluster. And it looks like this. So you're going to have a main data center in which you are running your VxRail cluster. And in, in your different remote locations, you're going to have one satellite node, which is simply one node, VxRail node, that runs a limited number of workloads. And it doesn't use vSAN, it uses local storage. This is a much cheaper option. There are, of course, some trade-offs if you want to go with this design uh, and not to pick up the two nodes cluster, but it's also a, a, an option that can be considered. So these are the five types of clusters available in VxRay. The training you guys are going to follow during the next three days is, is actually applicable to standard clusters and also to the other clusters to a certain point. Okay, some of the concepts are uh, are not really applicable to the likes of satellite nodes and dynamic nodes, for example. They have different procedures. Uh, that's why in the beginning I keep asking the questions in all my trainings, so I can know exactly what type of cluster you have and and and, and adjust the content if it's needed. Any questions about the clusters? Okay, no questions. Let's go back to the content then. So in order to build any of these clusters, we need hardware first. So let's look at the hardware components of our VxRail architecture. So we're going to need couple of VxRay nodes. So the VxRay nodes are Dell EMC PowerAge servers. Okay, uh, If you're not familiar with the uh, Dell EMC uh, well, server family of products, it's, uh, it's called PowerAge. Um, so it's available in different form factors. We have rack servers, towers, modular, etc. For VxRay, we typically use rack servers. These servers are using a very specific hardware configuration that meets the requirement of the VxRail software. <laughs> okay, so we have in each cluster a certain number of VxRail nodes. As I said before, for a standard cluster, you need a minimum of three nodes to build your cluster, and your cluster can be expanded by adding maximum of uh, 64 nodes. And of course, in a production environment, you can have multiple clusters. Uh, for comparison, uh, a stretched cluster, for example, can have 20 nodes in each site. All right? A standard cluster can have a maximum of uh, 64 nodes. A dynamic node cluster can have a maximum of 96 nodes. All right? So these nodes need to talk to each other. They need to communicate together. 
So each node need to talk to the other nodes within the same cluster. So we will use what we call here top of rack switches to enable the communication between uh, the nodes. So we're going to have typically two Tor switches, one and two, okay, for redundancy purpose. And each node will have a redundant link connecting it to each one of the two Tor switches. That's the minimum. Two network ports. And we'll talk about networking in a little bit more detail later. The Tor switches can be Dell EMC switches or your own customer switches. It's up to you to choose what kind of switches you have. Obviously, if you choose to implement Dell EMC switches, there are advantages um, when doing that. So first of all, you can include the deployment of these switches as part of the of the deployment uh, of your VxRail environment, which means our teams will take care of deploying the Tor switches. Uh, you have the possibility to enable automation or network configuration automation by implementing the Omni plugin, which is an additional component that enables automated network configuration uh, by connecting your virtual and, 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 uh, environment with physical network. Uh, this is a very good option if for customers looking, especially if you have a large environment and you are looking for a bit of automation in your environment, that, that can be a good option. Uh, now, if you choose to deploy your, your own switches, you will be responsible for deploying and preparing the switches before you deploy the cluster. Our team members will only, uh, or the deployment engineers will only run tests to ensure that the switches are well configured before we deploy the cluster. Okay, so two Tor switches used for uh, east-west traffic, communication between the nodes, uh, your production traffic. Uh, you know, the east-west traffic is Traffics like management, uh, vSAN, vMotion, and stuff like that. In addition to that, we need an out-of-band management switch, which is used to connect IDRAC from each one of the hosts. So IDRAC, for those of you not familiar with it, is our integrated Dell remote uh, access controller. Okay. I heard a beep in the chat. Let me see. Okay, welcome back. No problem. So, um, the out of band switch is typically <laughs> a one gigabit switch. It's a one gigabit switch used for connecting IDRAC. I was saying that IDRAC is our own out-of-band management tool, integrated Dell remote access controller, which is available in each one of Dell EMC's uh, servers. And we actually dedicate one physical switch for the out-of-band management. This is mandatory. Uh, should not be disconnected. Okay. The other Tor switches are typically 10 gigabit or more. 10, 25, typically, in most of the modern environment. It can be more. We, we do support 50 or 100 gigabit. That's also supported. 40, 50, 100. All of that is supported. Okay. So these are the physical components. If you are running a standard cluster, the three nodes, the first three nodes used to build the cluster <coughs> in day one, uh, which means when deploying the cluster, the first three nodes must be exactly the same in terms of hardware configuration, hardware and software configuration. They must be exactly the same. Once you deploy the cluster, the nodes you add later can be from different series. For example, uh, you may have a requirement to run maybe uh, 12 nodes cluster. 
So four nodes are dedicated for normal workloads, a mixed type of workloads. You're going to have four E-series, okay? So the cluster will be built using four E-series. Then you have a couple of VDI workloads. For example, you are running VMware Horizon. You're going to add four nodes running the V-series. So that's eight, okay? For the last four nodes, maybe it's something related to running some sort of uh, SharePoint or something, so you're going to use the uh, <coughs> A series, or maybe running uh, performance demanding databases. So you're going to have four P series added to your environment. That's a total of 12 nodes cluster with different series uh, of VX vendors. You can also mix different generations, that's also authorized to a certain point. Uh, this is ideal for customers who want to, you know, decommission de some of the old generations. For example, you have uh, some of the nodes based on uh, the 13th generation of their EMC servers. Then you add VXA nodes based on 14, then 15, and at the end of the day, you can remove the 13th generation servers and continue to run your workloads without any interruption. So these are the hardware components.